What's up, friends of the good food? This is Money, and welcome to the brand new Demeter robot, fully maxed on the live server. And you've seen in the intro right here how I was able to, you know, IQ level play 200 there, uh, kill the scorpion. That was incredibly funny, man. I saw the scorpion approach. It was like, oh, I need to teleport away, and it worked like a charm, man. Awesome. So this thing has three medium weapons, a decent, a very good amount of health. Uh, this constant absorber shield heals itself heals allies, can teleport to allies. Uh, it's all round like a very, very, very powerful robot, not just in uh, helping and supporting a a for allies, but also in, you know, taking on enemies yourself. You see me here going advancing on my own, taking out that hawk, taking out the scorpion without any problems, and then retreating back very quickly to my teammates, because that's something that's really awesome. Now, if I need, you see the enemies now coming for me, right? All of these guys are like, oh man, I'm gonna get you back, right? What I do, I simply turn back into my base and just, you know, teleport to one of my allies and that's it. The thing is though that you cannot manually switch uh, to your target, so uh, you teleport to somebody, the, uh, yeah. But anyways, this guy right here from the Honor Clan, this is my target, I want to keep him alive with everything I've got, okay? So let me show you uh, the capabilities of the Demeter robot in terms of keeping friends in the game. Because that is the role of a supporter and I'm playing a support character or support, um, uh, you know, robot right now. And the guy from the Honor Clan right next to me, he's still here, he's still in the, in the game. Because I'm gonna protect him with, you know, with all my life, basically, okay? So I'm, a pr and the thing is I have to look at him all the time because if I don't look at him, chances are I accidentally have a different target friend ally targeted somewhere and I teleport 400 meters away somewhere else you know and you can't teleport back so that would be very bad so if you want to help somebody with the Demeter robot you have to really look at him every time you activate the ability otherwise it's gonna be a problem so you think he's almost dead now oh yeah he is but I'm gonna keep him alive for a long time guys because I'm gonna activate that absorber shield and here comes the Nodens, and the cool thing is, two guys are within my shields, and they all realize and understand that we're, we're very safe right now, and that we can all deal free damage to that Nodens for a few seconds. And I was backing off, and they all understood that if they want to stay in the shield, they also have to back off, and so we were moving as one. And that was very awesome right there, I must say. Using the support characteristics of the Demeter is very fun. Look, the guy is still uh, still alive, and I <laughs> killed his target. I killed the hawk that was attacking him before, and I still have him with me, man. Uh, it's awesome. So this this Demeter is not only one of the most interesting and probably most potent healers in the game. On top of that, it has the ability to really just uh, you know take out people very quickly with three heavy, uh, medium weapons doing tremendous firepower. You have that shield also for yourself if you need it. However, again, if you need that shield just for yourself and you want to activate that, don't have anybody aimed at from your team because then you're going to teleport to them, right? So that's uh, the statistics after this very short clip here. Uh, you see, this is the actual intro that I thought. You see, we are having balanced unit. We have the new legendary pilot, uh, Jerry Fortune right here. Um, with all the pilot skills, including... 19% more HP and that twice, right? You can get 19% more HP and then you can sacrifice firepower for more 19% HP or speed. And here's a little outtake, see, a blooper. I was gonna teleport on the Aochun and then somehow I got, I got bailed out and just shot, shot somewhere else and I fell. And here's another outtake. I was signifying Crap Hunter here that I'm with you, man. We're gonna do this, okay? You got, you go there, I cover you, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's do this. And then I was like, whoa, whoa, sorry, wait, ah, no. He's got stealth, I can't jump after him. He's got stealth, so I cannot target him. And then I wanted to target him, and I get the guy under the bridge, and I was like, oh my god, could this have gone any worse? I couldn't jump on the scorpion because he's got stealth, and even I from his team do not see him. Big problem, Pixonic needs to be fixed. A heal robot needs to see his friendly allies also in stealth. It's inevitable that we have to do this because otherwise we can't target them. We can't see how much health they have. We don't know if they need help. We can teleport onto them and so on, right? So very important, please make that happen that we can always see uh, our allies even if they go stealth or not, right? That's one very important thing. The second very important thing is that 
I show this later, there's a problem with the targeting system on the Daymator robot when it comes to Titans in the front of you. I'm gonna show this later, okay? But let's stay with him here. We are now here with another Scorpion, and he understands that it's... Oh, no, it's the same. It's Crab Hunter again. And uh, I was with him here. I was protecting him from all sides with the a Absorber Shield. I was also dealing a lot of damage, and now I'm taking out an entire Ravana really quickly. Like, boop! That's it. Two seconds. Ravana done. And, uh, and Crab Hunter was with me here the whole time. He now... No, he's still there. He got a Beyond Godlike, actually. Nice job, Crab Hunter. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that you can make happen, right? If you play those supporters and you play them well, people really get to have great matches. People really get to have awesome situations that they would otherwise not be able to have if they didn't have you supporting them, which is uh, why a support role in the game is so fun. It is such an interesting concept, Pixonic. And again, I can't stress this enough, in order to keep this working, you have to work on the Scatter, Devastator, and Havoc. Because if they reduce all healing to zero possible, uh, zero possibility of healing, then the result is that all the support healing is not going to work at all. And this is where my suggestion comes in. Keep the healing as it is normal. The max amount of HP can still be healed as normal, but it requires twice as much healing. Um, to do this after a target has been hit with Scattered, Devastator, or Havoc, right? You you need twice as much healing if those type of weapons have hit you, making healers even more useful and needed now, right? This way, the Scatter, Havoc, and Devastator still keep their effect of reducing healing, making healing less effective, but the maximum HP can still be healed to the same level. It just requires much more effort. It requires more support, right? Hence, bringing supporters even more into the game rather than turning them down uh, in a uh, in basically useless healing. And uh, that was a really that would be a win-win for supporters, and it would be a win-win for the scatter havoc and such uh, weapons because uh, a passive pilot healing skill will no longer be able to very quickly heal up uh, your, yourself. You will now really need to look for somebody who can heal you to get that amount of health healed, right? Um, and healing is still a thing. So yeah. That's my two cents here. We're in the meantime uh, battling with our allies here. Titan versus Titan battle and we're in the midst of it and trying to really heal up, right? I'm gonna, as soon as the ability is back, I'll be teleporting onto the Arthur. I'm gonna shield him and I'm gonna heal him. And the healing capabilities are amazing. Look, this Arthur is almost dead. Half his HP is gone and I'm healing him passively right now and then I'm giving the boost at the end. Whoosh! Did you see that? That boost was like, I don't know, 200,000 health or so that he's gotten in one one swift bloop. And that's the, uh, you have two healing waves to use. You basically search, select a friendly target and teleport to him. The second you do that, he starts healing up. Even though you haven't yet teleported to him, he already receives the healing from you. These healing pulses that go constantly. That's the interesting thing. You're not even there yet, but he's already getting the healing um, the passive healing that you have next to him right now as we have it right now uh, And then at the end you have this or whenever you need it You can trigger within the ability run one manual healing pulse and that healing pulse only is available within your healing shield and uh, If you do this right you can make an absolute abnormal amount of healing uh, possible You can probably heal up a Titan by 50% in this one healing pulse if you just make it right here, team play again. Raptor in front of me. I see the scorpion. I know what he's going to do. I'm waiting for him to start teleporting. Then I trigger my teleport after him, which means I teleport at wherever he goes. And this is where I am now with him together. He realizes that, oh, wow, I got a support car dude with me. He stays in the game a little longer than he would have otherwise. And uh, we were both able to do a lot more damage now uh, uh, compared to what we have done if we were alone, right? So uh, that was really awesome um, that uh, it works very well with the Scorpion play, but only if they don't have the stealth uh, pilot, the legendary. If they enter stealth right now, we can't do it, right? So um, that's something that we need to keep in mind. Again here, going and sh blocking the damage away from the Arthur and then giving him the healing pulse and whoosh, and he's immediately full. I have not yet found out how much HP altogether that healing pulse is. That may be something for another video, right? Or maybe somebody else wants to cover that part. Uh, it's interesting, but the amount of healing with that one pulse is insane. And let's not forget that healing also counts to your damage statistics, so uh, you get very good matches, right? So let's show you what one 
uh, Daymater can do in a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Uh, I'm abandoning my teammate in this situation because I do want to find out how strong is the Demeter by himself. All right, so that's the one thing. We've already seen a little bit of that. Uh, but, um, of course, I also want, I want to give you some more of it. So we've already heavily damaged that Ao Ming up in the air. And uh, I'm going to come now to the problem with the targeting system. Things that are above you or below you. You have a targeting problem with the Demeter that's very specific only on the Demeter. I haven't seen this anywhere else. As soon as the Titan goes closer to you than a 55, 45 degree angle in front of you, you lose the target. Look, he's in the target. And right now, because he's within the 45 degree angle frontally forward, okay? But there will be a situation coming in a few seconds where he gets a bit closer. And then you already start losing the target, which is something that doesn't normally happen. Um, and also, keep in mind, uh, one thing you to, to keep in mind here, you constantly slide upwards on ramps. See that? I'm like, I'm like sh going upwards the tower, which is very... Pr yeah, see? I cannot target the Ao Ming. I can't. I can't target him. Because he was getting closer to me, and then there was this targeting problem with the 45 degree angle where he got closer. He was at a 50 degree angle, and boom, I lose the targeting system. So that's something to keep in mind, guys, uh, that Pixonic, I guess you need to fix that, because it's definitely not intended that somehow uh, the Demeter is unable to aim at a target just because it's, you know in front of you, above you. Um, I mean, if it's above you, right above you, that's where you lose your target, but not when it's like a 45 degree angle in front of you and then gets one meter closer. That's a bit unusual, but you've seen we've taken out the kid, we've taken out the Ao Ming. We're now taking out a full Fenrir with legendary pilot and also a Pursuer in stealth. I'm just gonna aim at the Fenrir, which means I can hit the Pursuer very well. Boom, there you go. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, of course, with the Havoc, I mean, this is the most powerful brawler Eve a a possible, because, again, those weapons are currently overpowered, in my, in my opinion. Um, but also with other setups, you have seen the poles are also used here in this very video, and they also do pretty well, I think. We've taken out that ra Raven before like it was nothing, and, uh, because of that shield, that shield really allows you to one-on-one -on -one people very effectively. You have it for, like, six, seven seconds or so. I guess six, six or seven is probably accurate. That's how long the shield lasts for you. And uh, that gives you opportunity enough to kill enemies uh, without them being able to shoot you back, right? Uh, in this case here, he did a good job. He came in, he went, stayed within the shield. He made, he pushed me really well. And that's how I got this still destroyed. Here again, showing you the problematic with the lock on. See, boop, target lost. And I'm trying, I'm hitting the retargeting button and only because he lands, I get him back into my target. There's gonna be one more situation where it happens again. So again, this is definitely a bug. This is not intended. There's no way how I how you know, losing target. I can't aim at him. I can't. I can't aim at him because he, apparently he's too far above me. Even though he's, you know, really far away from me still. And um, yeah, something that needs to be fixed. And also this sliding up on ledges is a bit annoying because sometimes you can't control that, right? Maybe you have to look at that too, Pixonic. And um, yeah, again, the, the, uh, the teleportation to friendlies who are in stealth needs to be possible. You need to be able to look at them, you need to be able to see what health they have and, uh, and provide them with support. That is your job to do as a support character, right? And uh, so that is my feedback, and the other part was with the Scatter Havoc and Devastator. Please make it happen, Pixonic. It needs to happen. Otherwise, I'm afraid that all those supporters, they just may not be able to use or work very well because the popularity of those weapons is only just beginning because they are so powerful and overpowered right now. So yeah, make it happen. And here, you see one-on-one -on -one potential, no problem. So that was the video, ladies and gents, the, the new Demeter robot. Hopefully you had some fun watching. And uh, if so, then leave a like and comment down below. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Manny signing off. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, of course, I'm now going to start covering all the other new things on the update, right? So you see me there. Bye.